Welcome, everyone. If I speak like this, can you all hear me okay? Yeah. All right. I thank you for your patience with noise. I thank you so much for gathering here tonight uh, in solidarity, of course, uh, with such a thing as Charlottesville, uh, in solidarity with events like those in Barcelona, the people affected deeply and negatively at this point in our culture and in common culture uh, by hatred. A Polish poet named Irena Kletzis has this to say, which I think speaks sadly to the present moment. I see now the present dangers, the dangers of the void, of the American hollowness in which I walk calmly day and night as I continue my life. I begin to understand the ingenuity of it, the invisibility, the Holocaust without smoke. I think it is sad and telling that those last two phrases, the invisibility, the calling Ellison's invisible man, and the Holocaust without smoke, suggesting that there is injustice transpiring subliminally beneath our field of vision. But it's important that we have gathered to try to focus more clearly on that fact, to gather our strength, and to see what it is that we can do about that invisible situation altogether. Now, Kleptis is talking specifically about anti-Semitism, hatred of Jews, but sadly we can take the point more broadly and acknowledge that there is hatred and injustice operating systemically in the culture. And we have an opportunity, and I would say an obligation, to respond. And that connection heartens me to see so many of you gathered here tonight seeking a kind of response. Is there anyone else who would like to take this moment to say a few words to the present situation, whether it's student or faculty member or staff member? Danny, would you like to speak to us? Thank you, Lord. Yep. Can you hear me if I talk this loud? Um, every chance I've had this week to talk and welcome different groups are coming back to campus, I talked a little bit about the paradox that Taylor was describing in that we're very excited to see each other. There are ways that we carry happiness, and yet, as human beings, we are creatures who can have very contradictory emotions because everyone is also carrying worry and concern. And it's, it's like, how do you have both of them at the same time? Um, when I spoke with faculty about this just a couple of days ago, I encouraged them to think about the kind of things that all of you would bring to campus, wherever you've been in the summer, the kind of things you'd be thinking about. And I, I asked them to think about one central metaphor. Um, I think many of us thought, if you do certain things, we will turn off a certain kind of hatred and the world will be better and will go on. And I think as we watch things continue to happen, I struggle to know what is that kind of metaphor that I need to look for and that I can use to describe what we have to do. There's a quotation from a woman named Krista Tippett. She interviews a lot of people who work with different communities of faith, and she finds people who struggle to try and create justice in different places in the world. And she comes up with a sentence where she said, you know, these are people who don't wait for the right person, the perfect answer, the best data, but they know that they are called to always wrestle, to shine light, to dispel darkness. And I think that idea that what we do is constantly work to shine light. Being here together, thinking about the kind of things that, that Belden was describing, we are all working to shine that light, to dispel the darkness that destroys, that pulls us apart. Uh, that creates the racism, the bigotry, the, the violence that we are all talking about. So I would encourage you to think about how 
being a part of a community, being a part of the kind of encouragement that Taylor was asking you to think about, um, being a part of that living beyond labels that Faith was asking you to talk about, those are ways that being part of a community like this asks us to shine a light so that we can dispel darkness. Any other statements from students or faculty or staff? Um, I'm a UVA grad, and so watching what was happening um, on my, my campus was really, really hard. Um, it, it just, it, it broke my heart, but then I had to remember that it wasn't, they didn't give them permission to do that. Um, but what gave me hope was the next day, because I was, I was really sad, my heart was aching, um, not just for my campus, but for everything that was, was happening. The next day, there was um, a candlelight vigil that wasn't put on social media. It was just spread from one person to another. And there were thousands of people who convened on the lawn. And they sang songs, and they sang spirituals, and they sang this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And for me, it replaced the hatred with the peace. And it just, just washed away all of those things that had happened, at least for me on my, my campus. Um, so I just want to leave you with this, and a good friend of mine told me, a fellow UVA grad said this to me, um, there are more of us than there are of them. And I always try to remind myself of that, and we saw that in Boston. There are more, more of us than there were of them. And so I think the hope and the light, if we can remember that in those moments when we are sad and we are down, we don't understand why people are this way, or how could you possibly be this way, understand and this is how I get through it, is that there really are more of us than there are of them. Thank you so much. Any other contributions, please? My name is Katia. Um, I don't know if it's a negative, but my daughter is my negative. But um, basically, when Charlottesville happened, I was in this I was in Mississippi going to New Orleans, like from back to Texas. And basically I was oh basically I was getting most of my information from people that I follow on Facebook who were um, I guess live streaming the event. And they were talking somebody was at UVA and he was posting pictures of it as it was happening. And I just remember being extremely numb because this isn't new. You know, it's something that happens a lot. I think it even happened in Houston a few, about a year back at Herman Park. And, like, for me, it wasn't different. And for a lot of my friends who, like, have to deal with situations like this, it also wasn't different. And we were both kind of like, why is everybody so shocked? And I just remember reading Between the World and Me by Tanisi Coates that day, and, like, finally finishing that book, and it was really ironic because of the situation. And, what he was talking about, and it seems so surreal that everything he said in that book fits so perfectly into that event that day. And basically, like, what I got from that was, like, we can't be surprised. You know, like, we have this idea that everything is, like, I can't believe they would ever do that, or I can't believe that would ever happen. But we live in a world where like, everyone around us knows how the other person thinks, or we know there are smaller events and there are smaller ideas and thoughts that fuel that kind of hatred. And oftentimes you're ignoring because you think it's just, it's just that person or it's just how they feel and they're not gonna really do anything about it. But those little things have such a huge impact on people's lives at the end of the day. And for me, I just hope that this isn't where things stop. Like Charlottesville isn't the last thing that's going to happen. Even if we try to stop it, it's not gonna be the last thing that's going to happen. I just feel like we should also understand that Charlottesville was after Ferguson, Eric Garner. There are just so many issues that have been publicized and didn't lack the same support that Charlottesville did. And it was disappointing to see that it had to be this situation that got everyone to understand just how deep it was for modern people. And I think it's really important that Trinity becomes a lot prouder and bolder about who they are. This is a liberal arts school, a majority of us are liberal, but we can't be silent and allow things to happen 
and then hope for the better. We have to be active. We have to be doing things. Like, it's okay to attend a BSB meeting and find out what's going on with black students and their, their lives and what they're going through. It's okay that, for example, um, the elected of Trump, I remember that day I emailed the teacher and I said I can't go to school. I mean, I can't go to class because I personally can't deal with the emotions of having to walk through campus, a majority white school, everybody's like living their life, but I can't because I know the impact of this election to the people that I live with and the community that I'm part of. And it was kind of like, oh, we'll support you. But at that same time, it also made me feel like I was the only person that felt that way. But I couldn't function during that election and it was just me because, you know, I'm just me. But I think that it's really important to take account of other students' feelings and how everything impacts them. And rather than just being silent, being like, oh, I support you, but also showing that support in other ways. And also just understanding that things, for example, there are like talks all over the, the school. And I remember waking up and my friend who saw it before me and I was just like, how, how could anybody just walk by that and not feel that much pain and not even try to report it earlier, you know? Like how do people just function and it's just me? I know there's a lot of people on campus that do a lot of things, but if you're not being vocal about it, then nothing's changing. You can't just say I'm for all equality and then sit down and enjoy the privileges that you have while others are suffering. You have to give up that privilege or use that privilege in order to gain that equality. And this is weird, but I was talking to my boyfriend, who's white, about equality. And he was basically saying, well, it's really hard for me to think in that perspective because I, I live my life and I get to do certain things because of who I am. Why would I want to give up that so that someone else can have equality? Because, and it's not like big things, but being able to go somewhere, being able to do certain things, buy certain things, comes from that privilege. And sometimes you have to give up that privilege in order for there to be equality. Even if it's a sad situation to think about, or even if it's hard for you to think about giving that up, I think it's really important to consider all of those things. And so basically for me, I just hope that this isn't where it's gonna be end with supporting other people. That this is a, this will not be the only solidarity that ever happened. There should be solidarity for Ferguson, for Eric Garner, for other things that have happened and will probably happen in the future because without this kind of support that we're having right now, there's no way we're going to be able to stop or prevent things from escalating to the point that they got now. And that's the thought. Thank you so much. Let's please thank again everyone who was courageous enough to speak now. know that's hard to do, or generally it's hard to know how to respond concretely to situations like this and to this systemic uh, injustice that is the rule. Um, to conclude, here is a very recent articulation of that confusion uh, and yet that opportunity from the poet uh, Sherman Alexi. I'm not quite sure what I should do. I'm as angry and afraid and disillusioned as you. But I do know this. I will resist hate. I will resist. I will stand and sing my love. I will use my fist to drum and drum my love. I will write and read poems that offer the warmth and shelter of any good home. I will sing for people who might not sing for me. I will sing for people who are not my family. I will sing honor songs for the unfamiliar and new. I will visit a different church and pray in a different pew. I will silently sit and carefully listen to new stories about other people's tragedies and glories. I will not assume my pain and joy are better. I will not claim my people invented gravity or weather. And though I know I will still feel my rage and rage and rage, but I won't act 
like I'm the only person on stage. I am one more citizen marching against hatred. Alone, we are defenseless. Collected, we are sacred. We will march by the millions. We will tremble and breathe. We will praise and weep and laugh. We will believe. We will be courageous with our love. We will risk danger and sing and sing and sing to welcome strangers. Thank you all so much for coming out at the show of Jeffy. I'm so sorry. I know this is like, I already spoke. I already spoke. I know you all have things to do, but if I don't say this, I probably won't be able to say I think what Kezia so eloquently was stating is that we can't get comfortable. So I heard so many times, oh, well, things aren't perfect, but America's the best we've got. And I've also heard, oh, you know, people may be getting shot, but they're not in chains. And we say that like, like it's a no. And I'm not ignoring that we have made progress. And it warms my heart that we have made progress. But I don't think, I'm not satisfied with that answer. I don't know about you, but I'm not. There's still progress to be made. And there's still change that can happen. It's just going to depend on us. Play the action for So we, we can't be comfortable people. <laughs> we can't. That is all. <laughs>